Python is the most used programming language for DevOps engineers to do their everyday DevOps task. In this video, I want to share with you some of the most common use cases of Python in DevOps and how I use Python as a DevOps engineer. Hey everyone, welcome to CloudChamp. Firstly, I want to thank every one of you who has subscribed. We have crossed 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I post videos on cloud and DevOps. Let's start with the video. Python has become the most popular language for all DevOps professionals due to its simple syntax, easy to use and extensive libraries, making it the best option for different use cases like scripting, automation, infrastructure management and much more. As a DevOps engineer, I personally use Python every day for a variety of tasks like automating my task or integrating with different DevOps tools like Jenkins or Kubernetes. In this video, I will share with you some of the most common use cases of Python in DevOps and demonstrate how I use Python in my day-to-day -day work along with some projects and demos showing you the code. So don't miss this video and watch it till the end. First, let's understand why do we need to learn Python. So if you check out any job description for cloud engineer and DevOps engineer roles, you will see that they're asking for Python knowledge or Python experience. And you might be wondering if Python is required for DevOps or not, is coding required for DevOps or not? And I tried to answer this in the video. So watch this video and you will be able to know why is Python used? How much programming do you need for DevOps? So watch this video before you see this. So learning Python can help you easily get a job as well as to automate your task. So let's see some use cases of Python. Scripting and automation. So Python is used extensively for scripting repetitive tasks and automating processes such as deployment of applications, monitoring, testing. I create Python scripts for everything that can be automated. And Python can be used for automating wide variety of tasks from creating reports to setting up servers to rotating database passwords, taking backups and much more. Let me give you an example. So for example, you're working as a DevOps engineer and your manager asks you to rotate database passwords every day. So if you don't know Python, you might be running the query to alter the password every day. But if you know Python, you can create a script which will run the query automatically without you doing anything. So this is the power of Python. You can use Python to automate repetitive tasks by creating scripts for them. Number two is enhanced DevOps workflows. So in DevOps, there are so many open source tools to do tasks like SCI CD, configuration management, infrastructure provisioning, and much more. But sometimes these DevOps tools do not provide the built-in functionality depending on the project that you're doing. And that is where Python comes in handy. You can use Python to customize this application to make it use as you want. For example, in Ansible, you can use Python to create custom modules when no existing module is available for your required task. So using Python, you can create module and customize the application according to your use case. Another use case can be you might need to read some data from a CSV file that is hosted on S3 bucket or maybe in your local machine. So Python provides you with so many easy to use functions to retrieve data from CSV file and get the required data. So using Python, you can customize the applications and you can enhance DevOps workflows. Number three is cloud computing. Python provides you with libraries such as Boto3 or Apache LibCloud, giving you access to AWS, Azure, GCP, so that you can deploy applications on the cloud using Python. Automating this cloud deployments using Python can allow teams to reduce manual errors, increase the deployment speed, and to maintain consistency among different environments like production, deployment, and staging. Not only this, Python can be easily integrated with infrastructure as code tools like Terraform and CloudFormation so that you can manage cloud resources in the form of code, also maintaining the consistency and to save this code on version control systems like GitLab and GitHub. And in the example, I'm going to show you how you can create EC2 instance using Python Boto3 module. Number four is containerization. Containerization plays an important role in modern DevOps and every company is using containers to deploy their application. And that is where Python plays an important role. A DevOps engineer can use Python to work with different containerization tools like Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. In case of Kubernetes, a DevOps engineer can use Python to create Kubernetes deployment script where they can define how the Docker container should be deployed and managed along with how many replicas should be there, how should be the scaling managed, everything you can define in the form of Python scripts. With Python, DevOps engineers can automate container deployment and management along with monitoring these containers. So to do this, you can use Python modules like Kubernetes Python client, which gives you access to Kubernetes API that can be used to create, delete or pods, namespaces and all the different Kubernetes resources. 
So overall, Python is an ideal language for man managing containerized application in DevOps environment. Number five is monitoring and alerting. Monitoring is very important for any application. A DevOps engineer use monitoring to keep track of their system metric, application performance and security events using tools like Prometheus, Grafana or Nagios. One of the example is Python can be used with monitoring tools like Prometheus. So you can create a Python script to extract metrics from various sources. For example, getting CPU metrics or memory metrics from a server and then configuring an alerting rule such that if the CPU is 90%, then an alert should be sent to the respected person using mails or SMS or using Slack. So you can create a Python script to automate this process such that whenever a CPU is reached at a certain level, a notification should be sent so that people can quickly detect and address the issue in the system, ensuring smooth operation and high availability. Alternatively, even though you might have so many monitoring tools, there can be situations where you need to have a customized application for monitoring and alerting. And that is where you can use Python to create a customized monitoring and alerting system using Python modules like Flask or PSUtils and much more. Number six is data analytics and visualization. So as we have seen how we use Python to get metrics like CPU and memory from different sources, we can use this data to analyze and to detect if there is going to be any problem in the future. We can use Python to analyze this data to detect the patterns or to detect any issues that can come in near future. Python provides you with modules like pandas and matplotlib that can be used to analyze this data to see security threats and to avoid any issues along with matplotlib which is used to create charts so that we can visualize this data. So these are some of the common use cases of how you can use Python but there are endless options or there are endless use cases of how you can use Python. Now let's see some code. All right, so I'm here on my computer screen and let's see some real world examples and the code for Python. So first is I have some, I have few examples for you. The first one is to create an EC2 instance using Python. Uh, next is to use Python to rotate the MySQL database password automatically without you running the query yourself. And the third, I have an interesting example for you, which is a Flask application using PSUtil module to get the CPU and the memory of the server. So I have created a full-fledged project for this and if you want me to create a video for it, you can let me know in the comment section. But first, let's see the working of these examples one by one. So the first example is creating an EC2 instance. Let's say you are working in a company as a DevOps engineer and someone asked you to create an EC2 instance or cloud resources using Python. So how would you do it? So for you to create resources in AWS, you need to use something known as boot03, which is a Python SDK. So if I show you the documentation, this is the documentation here for boot03 and it says you can use AWS SDK for Python to create, configure and manage AWS services. So using boot 3 you can manage all types of services, not just EC2, you can create S3, you can create uh, Kubernetes clusters, you can create anything you want. For example, if I show you an example here, which is Amazon S3. So you can create Amazon S3 buckets using boot 3 So here is the code to create Amazon S3 bucket, which is using boot 3 as a module. So similarly, we are going to use boot 3 for creating an EC2 instance and set the client as EC2 because we are working on EC2. Next, we are going to define the parameters of what is the image ID for the instance we want to create, what is the type, which is T2 micro, key name, security group ID and submit ID. Once I fill in all these details, I am going to launch the instance with this response. Uh, and then once the instance is launched, it should give me instance ID, public IP and private IP in my terminal. So let's try to run this. But before I run this, let me show you that I don't have any instance in my account, which is in running state. So right now you can see there is no uh, instance in my account, which is in running state. And after I run this, after I run the script, I should have an instance in the account. So let's go and run the command. Before you run this, make sure if you're trying it yourself, you have done the AWS configure command to set the keys or else it will not work. So you need to run this command, set the keys, access key, secret access key, region and the output. Once you do this, then you can run the, run the file. So for me, I have already done the AWS configure. So I will go ahead and run the file. So Python 3 and the name of the file, which is create ec2.py. So if I, once I do this, uh, my Python is going to run because it is not showing any error and we have to wait. It will not show us an output unless and until the instance is in running state. But if I show you my console here, so in here right now you can see there is no, but if I refresh something, I should have an instance in pending state, which is here. So an instance, which is T2 micro 
is in pending state having this subnet id having the key pair as wordpress so you can and if i compare it with the instance that we have here let's see right now it is not showing us output because we have a condition set that unless the instance is in running state don't show me the output but now the instance is in running state so we have the output of the id public ip private ip all of it so here you can see the instance has 54.2054718484 as public ip and 172.3189.2 which means we have successfully created an ec2 instance using python so if you want you can try this out you can create a vpc s3 sqs lambda anything using python so this is how you can create an ec2 instance or any cloud resource using python next example is password rotation example so right now so i have mysql in my local machine and if i try to log in mysql hyphen u hyphen p uh, this is the password here so you can see i'm inside my mysql shell so this code python code is used to run a query which is alter user root at the rate localhost with localhost with this password so i'm trying to create a script to rotate the password of my mysql database automatically uh, it should create the password itself and then use that as a new password so let's try to run the script the script is using sub process string and random as a module sub process is to change run the query string is to create uh, this new password and random to generate some random data which is going to be used to create new password so once i run the script this is going to ask me for the current password once i give the correct password it will uh, run this query which is alter user and then it will show us the new password and it can also save it in this file which is here so let's try to run this i'm going to run python 3 and the name of the file which is password if i press enter it will ask me for the new pass which with for the current password which is here which i'm going to paste that one and press enter once i do this it gives us a new password which is this let's try to see if this is working or not so i'm going to go to my mysql shell exit from here let me make this big so that you can see it clearly so i'm going to run the same command and this time uh, if i use the previous one if i use the previous it will show us an error saying access denied so i need to use the new password because python has changed that changed it for us so i'm going to run use this password now and see if it actually works or not so you can see we are inside our mysql shell which means python has successfully rotated the password and you can customize this to run this script every day maybe uh, at two o'clock or one o'clock whenever you want and this should do the things automatically for you you can also customize it to not ask you for the prompt and get the things either from secret managers on aws or from a file so this is how you can use python to automate your task that you do every day let me show you another project which is more amazing or more fun so here we have a project so this is a project which is created in flask a flask module and then it uses a pas util module which is used to get the cpu metric and the memory metric of your uh, server so when i run this python script it is going to get the cpu and the memory of my server and if it is more than 80 percent it will show us this message so let's try to run this i'm going to run the python 3 and the name of the file which is this once i do this it is going to run on port 5000 and here is the result so you can see it is a system monitoring application which is getting a cpu utilization as 20 and memory as 38 if i refresh it will get real time metrics so you can see it's updating according to my server uh, metrics so this is how you can create your own monitoring application using python uh, flask and psutil so i have created this full fledged project where i've dockerized this application to host it on kubernetes clusters uh, so you can see i'm using porto3 module to create ecr which is elastic container registry where i'm going to store my uh, docker image and i also created kubernetes as i said python can be integrated with kubernetes so we have used kubernetes module here which is used to create deployments or uh, manage any kubernetes architectures like pod namespaces in this project i'm using kubernetes module to create a deployment file which is going to host my my flask app using this image so i can define anything i want along with the container port and i'm also creating a service here so the service is this 
I'm going to launch this pod in my default namespace. So everything I'm going to customize and I don't need to do anything manually. This application will be done everything in Python. If you want me to create a video on this project, let me know in the comment section. But I hope now you have an idea of how you can use Python to do everyday task or to integrate it with different uh, DevOps tools or to create infrastructure on the cloud. If you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section and I will answer it all. Thank you. Have a good day.